like this whole broken consist modified keeps coming up on your scenarios. I don't know what that is. Uh, and you've got a uh, vehicle there which uh, is not standard by the looks of it. Right, good morning, driver. Taking over this hold to London King's Cross service here at Selby, and we'll be taking it as far as Brantham, where another driver will take over for the remainder. Oops, no, that side. The lights on. I think I I don't think I one of the reasons um, that I wouldn't switch to iPhone is the stress of moving is the hassle of moving platforms. To be honest, you know, they, they I, even I used to moan about the lock-in on Google on um, iPhone, but to be honest, Google and Microsoft they're no different. So I've got all of my apps on the uh, Google infrastructure and all of my accounts on the Google infrastructure. If I've got an iPhone, I just end up using Google Mail for it still. <laughs> It's probably a reskin car because they remember they all all the reskins just sit alongside the default one, so it's really difficult to know whether it's a default one or not. Yeah, fair enough. Because you used how it works, totally get that. Totally get that. I used to be really anti iPhone for really silly reasons. I'm not really anti iPhone now because I think they're a really solid bit of kit. But yeah, if you're an iPhone user, you'd struggle to switch to Android totally. I do wish Microsoft had kept on a little bit longer with their um, Microsoft phones because I really fancied a Windows phone, you know, running Windows 10. In fact, when I got my last phone, this this one, the Xperia, I was going to uh, that was that was my slot. I was going to be going for my Windows phone, and they stopped doing them. Yeah, this so the this is the Xperia um, Crucible, and that's just plain vanilla Android. Right, right, driver, next stop is Johnny. Can't justify the iPhone price. It depends, because if you compare that... Ooh, a bow. Throw a dog a bone. Uh, if you compare that to the... Uh, like, it's the, a top-end equivalent Samsung, it's no different price, really. Phone is probably the, the the camera is probably the biggest reason that I needed something slightly better than than an, an average phone really. Uh, right, just let you know you'll be held up at Templehurst Junction to our southbound Flying Scotsman service to pass. Watch out. Maybe when you still have a Microsoft 950 back to keep using it for the stops working. Yeah, I really liked Windows 10. I really, really liked Windows 10. I heard rumour they were going to do a, um, a Surface phone, but then that really didn't amount to much. It is impossible to take a bad photo of you, Morgan. Don't be silly. Apparently you have to obey the speed limit as well. It's just ridiculous. No, you'll have your surprise at 17 miles, Moggy.
You only really use yours for texting, otherwise that's your laptop. Yeah, the vast majority of what I do on mine, I either don't need to do because I'm playing stupid games that I just shouldn't be playing anyway. Um, or um, I'm using it for the phone. <laughs> well, exactly well jumped, isn't it? It's, if you're not using lots of apps, then... So you've got a Lumia 950 XL. So that's the, uh, that is the, the top-end Microsoft one at the time, wasn't it? Wasn't that one of the last ones they did? Yeah, that was the one I was going to get. I really like the look of that one. Moggy's holding his breath. Excellent. We get a bit of peace and quiet, folks. Moggy, you told us you were going to hold your breath. You just... You just... Ugh. It's nothing sacred. <laughs> you do have a calculator on you at all times, yeah, yeah, really. You can hold his breath and type. Oh, that's no fun. My last Nokia was an N95, and it still works. Cameron's plan over his exam period is he's going to get a SIM, a SIM adjuster thing, and he's going to stop using his Sam, his S6, and actually um, use his Nokia N95 that I gave him. <laughs> Nokia N95 is a fabulous phone. It was absolutely brilliant. Oh, I had a number of different Nokias. I think I had the the N95. Um, I had the 8810, the banana phone thing. Um, the 99. Was it? I don't know if it was a 9910, something like that. It was the one that opened up, and it was sort of like a keyboard inside with a PDA. Oh, 9110, that might be a crucible. 9110. It was definitely a 9000 series. Huge great thing, it was like a house brick. And this was the newer version, the previous version was even worse. Oh, beautifully done. CJ, you bought a uh, crew ticket. Nicely done. Setting up to be uh, a fair old meet, this. Oh, we've got yellow.
Not with the yellow light, I can't give it beans. Single yellow we call minimal beans, yeah. <laughs> Just the one bean for now. No, I didn't see that for a mirror, thank you. I might as well crank it up then. Clear up for the 125 as well. I promise it's not a troll, uh-huh. Green light, we're good. Space Cheese 4, thank you very much for the sub, much appreciated. Did I get the UKTS's Twitch thing sorted out? No, I haven't made any more progress on that. I need to I'm trying to do that this weekend actually, Ben. I'm not home this weekend, so I'll try and dig into that. Any plans to upgrade or improve the editor for TS2019? I, I can't talk about anything which hasn't been officially announced here since XM tomorrow, unfortunately. So uh, when it comes to plans and things, then uh, you'll need to get that information from official 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 sources of which I am not one I'm afraid I keep running off at the mouth so it's probably a good idea <laughs> thought I was the head official? No. I'm a senior producer on TSW, but uh, there's a whole other company of people that look after all sorts of things. When it comes to anything relating to talk to the public, I do as I'm told, mostly. Oh, good man, Mole Jokeson. Red Devil Dom, what's this I hear about with Somerset Railway? They're down to being route availability 5 or something. So they can only run the club up to the class 33 and only if it's only half full of fuel or something. So have they had problems with the um, stability of the track then? Or is this the reason for the shutdown? Nine miles to Donny. Basically, this train is about delivering Moggy to see a Gronk, I suspect. No, uh, North Star and um, the Western, I believe, can't. Because they're bigger than Route Availability 5. Route Availability 5 isn't very much, actually. Technically, a fully fueled 33 is Route Availability 6. I tell you what, in their shoes, if the opportunity was there, for this upcoming diesel gala they've got going on, I'd switch that to being a DMU gala and try and gather together some different DMUs, heritage and modern and even, and sort of because they're nice and light. And it'd be really different. Ferrero, after this I'm running the Hudson Line doing CSX Freight.
Why are you offended, Moggy? I mean, surely you'd rather the, the Gronk would be out doing something than sat in a siding rotting. Oh, I remember that thing on the South Devon. Yeah, that was a pretty sad state of affairs. Yeah, never underestimate the desperation of someone who needs to use the toilet. <laughs> I don't care how much you've paid for your bowl. <laughs> it hasn't got hope. Down to the 40 mile an hour now. Using portals and routing AI trains. Do you mean on TS1 or TS World? Oh, it's boggy over there. It's a moggy boggy over there. So, routing things into portals, out of portals, all that kind of thing. Is that what you mean, CSX? I can do that. I will try and put something together.
Was anybody here, this is going to be a blast in the past, anybody here a member of the Rail Riders? Right, let's have an explorer of Doncaster, shall we? Oh, hello! Well, you better not be cutting up a gronk or someone's not going to be happy with you. It's like, oh my word, is that my train going away? <laughs> Bad news. Yeah, I was a member of Rail Riders for a long time. We had them big red bags, Dad and I. <coughs> 6024 can't be run due to its weight, wow. Next step is Redford. It's amazing how similar those dragons look like to German wagons. There's like some Ruse Tees, some Sackens, and some Abens wagons there. <laughs> Good night, Mole Junction. Good to see you again. Next station is Retford. Good night, Moggy. Another bone up here. Nice placement of AI stock on this one, Kyle. Statics around, keeping everything looking busy. Plenty of bones.
I do like the 50 eggs. Mixed TTA train over there. She's definitely behaving better since that reboot. Fourteen and a half miles to Retford. Magnet fishing? No, I haven't. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you find all sorts of things in the canal line. It's very dark. I'll try to take this off because I just noticed it's really dark in here. I have to change the lights around a bit. So I use my forehead to lighten it up, obviously. Yeah, I was in disguise for a mirror. As in, this guy's not really here. <laughs> yeah, I seem to remember something like that, Crucible. Do they have shopping trolleys and fishing sim? Well, no. <laughs> That'd be spot on, though. Yeah, right. it was the magazine I mostly was um, looking for because we didn't really go out that often. So it was, it was, uh, you know, I always enjoyed the magazine. First journey on a Pendolino CG. Wow. Uh, zero nine nine nine. Are you still there? Are you going to be doing um, the uh, train all the way, or are you going to drive and then just ride the train over uh, through the tunnel or something? Seven and a half miles for Redford. Yeah, I'm very impressed with the Pendolinos, they're a lovely train.
Train all the way, nice. Euro start of London, then a Pendolino up to uh, crew then. minute turn around at Newcastle, I'm not really sure you have to do things with ticket machines, oh dear. bit late to Redford. That's nothing unusual for me. But I got a yellow light so I had to slow down. Did it? Oh, I didn't see that. If you're just picking up your ticket, CG Live, it's actually really quick. It's the only thing that might be a delay is if you're, um, um, what's it do that? Um, if there's a queue for the machine. This is for speed reductions coming up to bring us into Ratford. Redford. What's going on over here? Sneaky bit of BR blue. Ooh. 
Ooh, push pull. I still made it within the minute. Uh, back in the day, would the push pull just have one loco doing all the work or radio control at the US or a long MU cable? It would either be two drivers or one driver who's in either end. Then we didn't have radio control, I don't think. And multiple unit working was only for directly coupled units. Job is non stop to Grantham. If in doubt, CG Live, go and ask the um, person at your local station, talk to this, the, um, the person in the ticket office, and say, Look, this is what I've done, this is what I want to do, can I pick my ticket up now, and will it be good? And they'll do it. I tell you, just to give you a reassurance that you're all good. Oh yes, of course, Retford's on two levels, isn't it? Say that. What, explain what you mean, Steve. I'm quite not sure. Problem we're trying to solve. The use is usually the biggest problem. <laughs> But there might be a phone helpline you can ring up or talk to online CG Live as well. Right, crawling back up to speed, heading for Grantham, 31 miles away. Oh, and that's our, that's our final. That's it, Twitter National Rail, that'll do, CG.
91 miles an hour, we get clearance up to 125 shortly. Driver just legged it out the window. He's taking videos from the side of the track. We're not alarmed at this at all. Hey Neil, how's it going? I'm doing well, thank you. Six miles. The miles certainly bleed off when you're going this fast, don't they? This feels like an ideal time to top up the old coffee. Because at 20 past midnight, a coffee is absolutely the right thing to do. So this week, if I, if I hope, assuming I'm able to stream some more, which I'm hoping I am, any particular things you want to see? I know someone um, said earlier on they wanted to see the 182 when it comes out. Uh, I guess Wednesday Rapid Transit would be an interesting thing to look at, but um, what, what, what have been recent releases on TS1 that I haven't done? You've been known to have a large full English this time of night. Sounds like a cracking idea, Neil. I mean, to be honest, a full English is good any time of the... Of the uh, It's good any time of day, to be honest. 101. <laughs> I don't actually have that at the moment, Stephen, but when I get it, I will um, I'll run it. It does, but um, smoke boxes stuff isn't part of the auto DLC thing. Your 47 on my scenario. All right, I'll see if I can put a list together. If folks, if you're on Discord, drop me a message on Discord with what you want to see, and I can uh, try and uh, put something together over the uh, next couple of days. 
suggestion sheet kind of needs a rethink at this point because there's so much on it. <clears throat> it's basically just a list of every Steam work, uh, scenario on Steam Workshop. <laughs> Bossman's Royal Scott. I don't actually know. I don't think so. Although that Hoover he's making looks rather nice. Oh, it has been released. Ah, oh, I'll have to run that then. So many things that have been released, I've got no idea. That sounds good, Stephen. If you can make a couple of notes based on what's already been suggested. Over at Ridge. Friday will be breakfast and be uh, Ben. That's my plan. Oh no, actually, well, yeah, Friday will be breakfast. We just think Friday is a dovetail stream. Oh, Neil, yeah, it's an AW. What you're looking at is AWS. Um, this thing. This is called an AWS ramp uh, and it's connected to that signal and if that signal is uh, anything other than green then this will cause a uh, an alarm in the cab. Hey train track trap, yeah well it was all looking a bit dark on the uh, on the camera so I thought I'd lighten it up with you know extra forehead. And the other type of thing you've got in the middle of the tracks is this one. This is a um, TPWS um, um, grid which are designed to stop the train. So the first grid triggers arms rather and the second grid, uh, grid triggers uh, and because they're so close together and they're only armed if this signal's at red which means that if you ever go over there then it'll immediately hit the brakes. But they also have over speed sensors as well so that's a train stop which is the two next to each other. Then you have the OSS, which is where they're further apart, and essentially that means if you go over them over a certain speed, it'll trip the brakes. But it's not like a piece of B or anything where you've got to acknowledge it or anything like that. It's just, if you're going too fast, the train stops, that's it. That's your options. both magnets in less than one second yeah something like that
10 miles for Grantham. Seven and a half. That's all the different signals. Oh, can you send me a um, a message, Derek, about that, because I'm interested in getting some more reference on US signalling. Just my own, so that I can read on it. Which spreadsheet's that, Stephen? <laughs> Yeah, I guess those were the Speedlink ones from uh, Matrix, not Matrix. Can't remember the name now. Yeah, there's too much in the suggestions. Everyone suggested everything under the sun, so there's probably about a thousand still to play on there. So I kind of want to curate that down now to something, actually something what people actually want to see now. <laughs> I thought I'd already slowed down enough. Oh, there's a little sneaky 100 miles per hour section in there. GG. Hundred minutes. That'd be okay for a charity stream, Fab Diva, but probably not for a normal one. A Twitch integrated suggestion for Go on Stephen, tell me more, what are you thinking? I like the sound of it. Oh that's really interesting, Neil. Thank you, Derek. Much appreciated. I'll go and dig it out on Amazon. I've got a couple of cracking books that I picked up about American railroads. I'll have a think, Stephen, see what I can come up with. What I might do is add a forum onto trainsimlive.tv.
pulling into Grantham. Just about bang on time. 156 over there. Um, so you can get a platform pass at some stations, Neil. It's worth checking in with the station in, in advance, though, if you can, just because some of them are really good, actually. When Cameron went to Cameron, some of his friends went train spotting, and one place they went to was King's Cross. I think it was King's Cross. And what they did is they took all the lads over into a room, gave them a training video, which is not. It was just partly about how to be safe and sensible, but also what to look out for. If you're going to be out on the platforms, you might as well help us, um, and what to look out for, and what to do if you find something, and then. They were all given ID cards with the photos on them, and they were allowed into, you know, onto the platform. And because they'd gone through that, they were actually allowed into places that normally they wouldn't be allowed to, because they were, they were, you know, on, you know, onto the crosshatch areas and things like that, where um, because they knew that they could, they behave themselves. It's really, really impressive, actually, because that's quite a lot of work to go to. That's not just someone saying, "Yeah, go on then." That's actually a process that's been created, and there's some serious effort gone to there to support that. But it's very hit and miss, I find, when you go to a station. Some of them, are, they won't, they don't want you on there, and they'll just, oh, you need to contact the operator and get permission. It's like, but I'm not here for commercial purposes. I'm just here on my own. I'm with Cameron. <coughs> For North, I hate everybody. <laughs> this morning is your shift is done. That was good. Thank you, Kyle. I quite enjoyed that actually. I don't normally uh, get so much fun out of the uh, the, the high speed thrash, but that wasn't bad.